Welcome back to Wargaming World, to France 1940, and to another game of Chain of Command. Okay, so this game of uh, Chain of Command is entitled The Probe, and uh, we have a uh, an attack by uh, one force, and they're going to be attacking from this end of the board. And the purpose of the game is to get one team off the board at this end. Right, but we need to work out whether it's going to be the Germans or the French who are holding this defensive line. So first roll of the game, one, two, three, the defenders are going to be the Germans, four, five, six, it's the French. And it's the French to defend. Now just a, a couple of words regarding the uh, tabletop and in particular the stream coming across here. You'll see we have a bridge and then we have uh, a sort of a stone area or somewhere somebody can ford, but actually uh, the Germans can come across uh, uh, the river at all points, or the stream I should say, it's only two or three feet deep. Uh, the important point about it is that uh, if you go across, uh, not across the uh, the sort of fording area or the bridge, then it's just going to be uh, like difficult terrain, two or three feet deep uh, going across. So it doesn't make it uh, impossible for uh, the Germans to get across, otherwise it will make it a very difficult uh, game uh, at all. And also uh, the uh, uh, attacker, or indeed the French if they take it the other end, can use uh, the bank in terms of uh, soft cover. Now the uh, defending force uh, will be uh, a Senegalese uh, platoon and uh, that means the uh, the force are regulars and are plus one. Uh, the Germans will be a motorised uh, infantry platoon, also plus one, so the only thing we need to work out is the amount of support. So the Germans uh, will get this, the French will get half uh, rounded down. Okay, so three rounded down, uh, just one point for the French. Okay, let's start with the French force, have a quick look at that. Uh, we have our uh, senior leaders, we've got two. One is a an inferior senior leader, uh, two men there. We then have our uh, VB team, so we've got uh, four men with uh, a VB uh, grenade launcher, uh, one being a junior leader. Uh, this character here is a medic and uh, this is our one uh, support point uh, for the French. And then we have uh, three units which are identical. So uh, we have our uh, light machine gun, uh, it's a two crew with four rifles as support. And then we have another four riflemen and then we have an NCO. Now you will see this figure has uh, a uh, submachine gun but in fact uh, it'll be with a rifle. So we've got uh, three of uh, those sections and uh, that makes up our French defensive force. Our Germans on the other hand are uh, senior leaders. We have two senior leaders, one with a pistol and one with a submachine gun. And uh, this is our, our HQ and we also have a five centimetre mortar there with three crew. We then have three units which are identical where we have uh, our MG34 which is three crew, six riflemen and we also have our uh, NCO with a submachine gun. The Germans have three support points so like the French I have a medic and in addition we also have a pre-game barrage. Now I'm going to do the uh, patrol phase and putting down the uh, jump off points uh, uh, separately here so uh, we can get into the game quickly. However, one thing I need to do is to roll uh, for how many uh, free moves uh, the uh, Germans uh, get initially as the attackers. And with a three it means that we get uh, three moves. And importantly we need to have a look at force morale. So it's uh, black dice, Germans, blue are the French. And so uh, that means we have uh, 10 for the Germans and for the French, 8. Now because my table is 8 foot long, I'm starting the uh, Germans, I should say, here in terms of their patrol. You can see we've got our chain of command uh, markers there in terms of uh, morale for 8 and 10. And then all the way uh, across here we've got uh, our French uh, patrol markers and uh, we now need to start with the three free moves for the Germans. Right, there we are, we're all locked down. 
you can see we've got uh, a German here right on the edge of uh, the stream. The first French is there just by that uh, stone wall. As we go further in, uh, you can see they're all locked down within 12 inches of each other. Two of the Germans there and uh, two of the French. And the last one is just further along here. You can see it's on the, uh, uh, on the Ford. And then we have the last uh, of the Senegalese here. So let's take a look at the German jump off points first of all. We've got four uh, of our patrol markers, but uh, the first of the jump off points is here. Got some good cover uh, there. The second is uh, here by the church. I was tempted to have one either there. It was a bit too far back than I wanted, but uh, based on the cover that you could get in terms of the patrol phase, it had to be by the church or whether to have one right uh, on the side here, but I've decided uh, by the church gives us some options in terms of advancing towards the bridge and also offering support on the far side here, which is where the third jump off point is in that shattered building. For the French, there's a little bit more width. We've got a jump off point here. You might just see just by that tree. So there's some good cover there in terms of the stone wall, which will be hard cover. Moving further across, we've then got one in the building itself, so right at the back there, because obviously the Germans have to get right across in terms of getting off the uh, off the board, so we've got one in the building, so it should be a good position. And then a difficult one to see is just here behind the hedge, just there, and that's uh, as in terms of the uh, patrol phase, it was the use of that one there, and the uh, two German ones to give us the the triangle those two there so that's how we've ended up one uh, behind the hedge right okay so we've now got the uh, jump off points so start with the Germans and we're off to turn one and phase one just before we start actually I thought it might be useful to say how would I, would I play this uh, from one side so what I mean by that is from the attacking side what would I do uh, as the Germans and my plan here is uh, essentially we've got three squads so uh, it would be sensible if we attack with two and the other one uh, holds back uh, the French so we've got a good position uh, here and a good fire to keep uh, the French busy in terms of the building and indeed this uh, stonewall area and to see if we can get across on the left flank with two sections try and do it in a way uh, well, as cautious as we can and also make uh, use of the barrage which is coming across on the uh, first turn and see how close we can get remember that the objective is just to get across and uh, I think there's some good cover there on the left hand side and let's see how the game goes with that as a broad plan Right, okay, so turn one, phase one, Germans to go first, and uh, we have a double phase. We've got a five, so uh, we've got one for the chain of command dice, a one and a three. Okay, so we've got uh, a three, the uh, unit appears, it's uh, tactical, and uh, we've got a double phase, so they're probably going to move again anyway, but uh, it's tactical, and then the one we've got, the mortar, that's as much as we can do. So we're on to the next phase, we reduce the dice down from five to four. And uh, let's go again. With us this time, and um, we've got uh, a two twos and two threes. Couldn't really be better. Now I've got two threes and two twos. The two twos are, will be the. I'll bring a senior leader on. Now, um, one of the challenges I've got is I've got a unit here. I could move them at the double and get them quite far past that hedge, I think. Or I could move them up to the bank and then set them up on Overwatch via the senior leader and try and cover a second squad who would move and potentially move past them. And I don't want to play this game as if it's just a question of getting off the board because I think that's not necessarily realistic. And I want to be sensible enough and think, well, what, what would they be doing you know, in terms of, of, of proper tactics? So I'm challenged with that a little bit, um, but I think I'll... Uh, I'll take the risk of it. We've got a pre-game barrage, so we won't necessarily get the French uh, on the uh, on the table. So I might move them through at the double, and I will take some shock, and then I'll bring another section in in the position they are in at the moment. Right, I've brought the senior leader in, 
and uh, I'm going to order the units who are crossing to move at the double. So let's uh, start with that. Let's see how far they go. And it's an excellent move. So that's uh, uh, that's ideal. So 17 inches. So 17 inches has got them very far. Uh, they're close to the jump off point behind the hedge there. You can't really see. That's where it is. About 7 inches away from it. But that's as far as they've got. Uh, we have a second unit which has appeared. So with the other three, uh, this unit is going to... Uh, appear and uh, will be on Overwatch. The senior leader, by the way, is the one right at the front there. So with the other three, I've got the unit out here and it's on Overwatch, along with that unit up at the top there, and uh, that's the end of the German phase. So the uh, first French phase, and we've got two for the chain of command dice. In fact, actually, that's a terrible roll. Two for the chain of command dice, six is a waste and a one and a four. That's uh, a really terrible roll uh, for the French. I can try and bring on a senior leader, and I may as well, uh, and I could also try and bring on a medic, uh, probably both of them being in the uh, house. So let's, uh, can I bring on the uh, senior leader? Uh, four, five and six required. Yes, we can. Can I bring on a medic with him? Four, five, six again. No, I can't. Well, I've got a senior leader in there, and uh, it's a uh, the end of the French phase. We've got the Germans as close as this, so I think we're going to lose this jump off point straight away, and we're almost going to be a point where they can get through the gap and win the game. German phase. Not a double phase. Uh, three fours and a two. And so I've got three fours, so I've brought in a new senior leader standing at the front there with the other senior leader. Can't move, but we might do some orders. I've brought the medic in uh, on one of the other fours just there. So, uh, the other senior leader is now going to move at the double towards that unit. 3d6, and uh, we've got 13 inches. He is now close enough uh, to take off the two points of shock with that unit. The senior leader here is going to order this unit to move at the double. The reason why I'm taking that conclusion is that even though they're going to dash down the road and they'll be in the open, this unit over here I'm going to use the two for that one to move as well. So that's going to uh, move in this direction. It's going to take this jump off point, and that only leaves one jump off point, which is the one in the building over there. And even if we get some French units out there, it's going to have uh, well two targets, and that's only if he gets past the uh, the barrage. So I will take that risk. So this one first of all to move at the double. 3d6, not as good, 8 inches. Over on the far side there, I'm going to move just two, um, 2d6, a normal move rather than at the double. I could move at the double with a really high roll. I'd get close to the gap between the barn and the house, but I wouldn't get there all the way, and I have no doubt that at some point the enemy's going to appear. I don't want them to be completely exposed and as if we're going to take on each squad individually. So I'm going to roll just 2d6 and hope we don't roll a double one. Uh, no, we certainly didn't. That's a total of 29 inches they've uh, moved in uh, uh, two moves. They've overtaken uh, that particular jump off point, so at the end of the turn we'll have to roll for a bad thing uh, for the French. But if we don't get some French troops out here, uh, we're not even going to get to the next turn. Vital French phase. <laughs> right. So, it's an end of turn. So all the overwatch disappears. We do have another roll for the French. We have a one. That will be the only thing. So I can bring on a medic. But at the moment that would mean I've got a senior leader and a medic on. So that's the end of turn one. It's going to be another French phase. Uh, but I actually I have to roll to see whether I can bring the medic on at all. Four, five, six. can I bring a medic on? Yes, I can. Well, I've got a medic and a senior leader in the uh, building, uh, but now it's turn two, and I need to roll again for the French, but this time uh, I don't need to have to test whether the uh, troops will appear. But I do have to test for uh, a bad thing, because we've lost a jump-off point. So a one, I think, is just a minus one. Yep, we've lost one, and the French are down to seven at the end of turn one.
see what we can get. A one, a two, a four and a five. Right, inevitably we had a one, a two and a four. So with the two, uh, we have a unit of uh, appeared. They're gonna fire on the Germans in the open advancing to them. All of them can't fire. I'm going to say that the machine gun can fire and then four rifles, so I think we're going to end up with ten dice there. And uh, with the four, we've got the other senior leader appeared, so I'm going to say, I didn't uh, declare it at the start, but I'm going to say this is the inferior uh, of the two, because uh, in my mind I have the senior in the, in the building. And uh, so he's going to order the uh, unit to uh, throw a couple of grenades as well. And uh, in addition to that, we've got a one, so I'm going to get this uh, medic to move uh, towards this unit because I'm sure that uh, at some point they're going to uh, end up fighting, so uh, that's going to be the use of the one. Let's start by just moving the medic. Uh, okay, eight inches, no problem. Okay, so the firing, I'm going to say it's a machine gun, which is six dice, four rifles, which takes us to ten. We don't fire in two ranks, so it's uh, going to be just the uh, front rank, ten dice, needing fours to hit the Germans. And that looks very, very low. It's just two hits. Germans are in the open. And uh, that means uh, it's one kill and uh, one uh, point of shock. I should have rolled to see which uh, which team. So uh, one, two, three, it was the machine gun team. Uh, no, it was the rifle team that had the person killed. Let's just see whether we have, uh, whether it was the uh, officer. No, it wasn't. So the senior leader uh, with the four is ordering the unit to throw two grenades. We're six inches away, so uh, we need to roll sixes on here, and we just want to make sure we also don't have a double one where we would uh, just drop the grenade. So the first one hits, and the second one uh, misses. So two hits, and uh, we're going to say the green dice is the machine gun team. Uh, one kill on the machine gun team and a point of shock on the rifles. Let's just check, is it the leader? No, it isn't. Under the French phase, over to the Germans. And we have a five, take us up to two on the chain of command dice. Wasted six, two twos and a four. Well, effectively I've got two fours here, so I'm going to use both of the senior leaders. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... I suppose I could take off the two points of shock off this unit, get the machine gun to fire, so that's eight dice. The alternative is to order it to fire, move, and then order the mortar to fire as well. That's the most effective way it could do some kind of damage on the French unit. So I'll go for that one, I think. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the three commands here. I'm going to have the just the machine gun to fire, it's the only thing that can fire because we've only got uh, three men at the front, but the machine gun team is at the front with that one. Uh, then he's going to move slightly back in order to be in range to put an order into the mortar, and the mortar will fire as well. So see how far uh, the senior leader moves. It's only three inches, but it's uh, near enough uh, to be near enough to the mortar. Two dice, four, five, and six for the mortar. One hit. The Although the, the, that unit is behind a wall, it's not really in cover from the from the mortar, I don't think. It will be in cover from the machine gun when we fire in a moment, but uh, I'm going to say that's not in cover uh, for the mortar, and it makes no difference. Eight dice needing fives. And uh, we've only got uh, two hits there. It's hard cover because they're behind that stone wall, and... Uh, we're going to say the green dice is the machine gun team, uh, and this one person is killed. Let's check, is it the leader? No, it isn't. All right, the Germans have to attack over here, and with hand granaten, uh, with the uh, with the senior leader, so let's work that out. Right, so if we're going to lead into contact, we've got to make sure we actually hit. Now, we're six inches away, there's two points of shock, so I'm going to need to be absolutely sure 2d6 to make contact, and therefore we can then do hand granaten and uh, all of the fighting. So let's just roll 2d6 and make sure we get there. We certainly do. So, hand grenade. How many hand grenades uh, land? Uh, three hand grenades. So, if that's three hand grenades, that's six dice of damage. So, three will be on the machine gun team and uh, the others on the rifle team. 
and that looks like we've got uh, two of the rifle team killed and one from the machine gun team and also in a point of shock on each. And with three people killed we need to see whether one of them is the leader. Yes it is. Is it the senior or the junior leader? One, two, three, it's the junior. It's the senior. And what happens to him? He's knocked unconscious. So senior leader wounded is definitely a bad thing. And the three I think might be a minus one. It's a minus one, so the French are down to six. Now we had three killed, so we need to make sure uh, we know which one, uh, whether it's, it's not, I should say. So roll of d6, one, two, it wasn't a member of the machine gun team, and the rest, it wasn't a member of the rifle team. And a one, so it wasn't a member of the machine gun team, but two rifles have been killed. Just before we work out the uh, casualties, one thing we need to do is to take some shock for the Germans, uh, caused by the fact that they are attacking uh, the uh, Senegalese infantry. So from the 1940 handbook, uh, we need to roll 1d6 of shock that can be distributed in any way uh, that the uh, French player chooses uh, for, the, uh, for the Germans. So let's see how many or how much shock uh, is added to the teams. 1d6 of shock. Uh, which is six, and I'm going to apply the six shock across the two teams. So that is eight shock uh, in total across the, well, we've got seven men and two officers. And I point that out, I know that the officers can't have shock, uh, but it means that uh, they aren't pinned, although either way they would still be in combat. Let's just work out uh, what the French have. So, looking at the dice there, we've got seven dice, that's seven men. We have the two green dice, is because the Germans moved 2d6. The uh, silver dice is two for uh, a junior leader. We don't get anything for the senior leader, because he's knocked out. Two green dice there, uh, at the bottom, is because they are aggressive fighters. We also get four uh, d6 as well, because they have a light machine gun. So, in total, we have 17 dice. Now the Germans, uh, on uh, reflection, actually the impact of the shock now is making quite a lot of difference, because uh, we have seven men, but we have to remove uh, four, because we have uh, eight points of shock in total. We have three for a senior leader, two for a junior leader, and then we also have two submachine guns in the uh, uh, in the group. However, that gives us uh, only 12 in total. So Germans to go first, six, or fives and six to kill, six is an additional point of shock. So it's an above average roll. Uh, we have eight casualties there with three additional points of shock and the French reply. And that's a draw. It's eight each, uh, although we have one additional point of shock uh, for the uh, Germans to take. But let's uh, work out uh, who the casualties are and the impact on the officers. Well, we'll do the uh, Germans first. We know that we've got eight casualties, so we know uh, the officer is uh, a definite uh, for one. Uh, it's uh, up to uh, six, but we then have two. So I'm going to roll a dice, one or two. And we also have uh, the officer uh, for the second time. Uh, no, it's not. So uh, in total, we have uh, seven men killed. And uh, we also need to look at uh, what happens to the officer and which one uh, is a casualty. So one, two, three. Um, we have the senior leader. No, it's the junior. And uh, what happens to him? Uh, he takes a light wound. It's exactly the same calculation for the French, so uh, roll first of all. So the junior leader is the one who is uh, injured. Senior leader at the moment is knocked out. Uh, we have seven uh, casualties. Um, we haven't had got, we haven't two casualties uh, on the officer. So seven men are killed, so it's the uh, entire uh, section. And we need to have a look and see what happens to the junior leader. Uh, he is knocked out also. So at the end of that, we have the German squad destroyed and the French section. We have the French junior leader and senior leader both unconscious. 
and we have a light wound for the junior leader of the Germans, but certainly uh, they don't have a team to get off board from that action. So we've got lots of uh, uh, bad things to work out and roll for, and see so we go from there. Let's work out uh, the French. We've got uh, section wiped out and junior leader uh, wounded. So let's start with junior leader wounded. Six, I think, is a minus two. And then we have section wiped out. Five, I think that might be a minus two as well. Well, the consequence of uh, the uh, bad things happening role means that the French have dropped from six to two on their force morale. So we roll for the Germans, section wiped out. Uh, that's a four. I'll have to check whether that's a minus two or a minus one. And we have junior leader wounded. Three is just a minus one. A section wiped out on a four is uh, a minus two. So we have a minus one for the junior leader. So the Germans have dropped from ten to seven. Uh, but in terms of uh, the game, the uh, French are struggling at two. Now, one of the consequences of losing all these men uh, for the French down to two on their force morale is that we need to uh, give up one of the jump-off points, uh, which is going to be this one uh, that's in the orchard. And uh, you have to remember as well, we lost a uh, jump-off point on the other side there at the start of the game, so the only jump-off point they have is now in this building. But they're still in the game. And it is a French phase with three dice. So six is a waste, uh, but we've got a three and a four, so we can certainly bring uh, a unit in. Now I think I might be able to uh, equal the game up a little here, because with a three I can bring in a new uh, section. And then I think the senior leader and junior leader are going to need to have to surrender, I think. Um, I could uh, have some kind of... Um, uh, handheld fight with them I guess but I think a surrender will be what they need to do uh, when I bring the uh, section onto the board and with a four I think I actually might use the medic to try and bring the senior leader uh, back uh, around over the next phase or so. Okay so I rolled a three and a four with a three I've brought out a new section and I asked myself then is to do the what I think is the civilized uh, thing I didn't just want to shoot the uh, senior and junior leader because I just didn't think that was uh, realistic and uh, therefore I think the two would have uh, surrendered. So I've taken one uh, infantryman and escorted them uh, into, uh, into this building. Now I then went out to the group and said how do we roll the bad thing? Should this count as a rout or as killed? And I got a mixed response uh, but the majority have said uh, it's really as if they've been killed, principally because it's not that they've routed and uh, that's been seen by other infantry but just assumed to have been killed. So that's what we're going to roll for in terms of the uh, bad things happen. So we've got a senior leader killed and a junior leader killed and let's see how that uh, affects the Germans. And just before I do, I'll say that with the four, I've used the medic. The medic's gone to the uh, senior leader, or the inferior senior leader, and he'll patch him up uh, during this phase. And just something to add, which I think is useful, is that if the uh, appearance uh, of this section would have meant that in terms of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, they would have been four times greater in terms of numbers, then the Germans would automatically rout, and therefore we wouldn't need to be uh, wondering one way or the other. But they're not in terms of the numbers here. The Germans have uh, a senior and a junior leader, which gives us four dice, and uh, we also have two submachine guns, which is eight, so we uh, we don't have 32 dice from the French. Okay, sorry that that was lengthy, but I just thought uh, it's useful going through those rules. Um, and uh, so we need to roll twice. First of all, senior leader killed, uh, that's a six, and I think that's a minus two. And then we have the junior leader killed, and a four, I think that might be a minus two also, which is minus four in total. In fact, the total here 
is uh, a minus three for the senior leader killed and a minus two for the junior leader killed, which is minus five in total, taking the Germans down to three. So with the Germans down to three on force morale, we are down to, or it's down to a German phase, and uh, we have three dice. So five isn't ideal, but we've got two threes, uh, which is. So uh, let's see how we use them. So it's a German phase, we've got two threes, and uh, I've just got these two units here. I'm tempted at this stage, in fairness, uh, to call a halt and actually look at it from a more campaign perspective and maybe uh, slightly change the table and have a new game, which is uh, attack on an objective. See, we, we can have a game where we're uh, trying to uh, get back the uh, two uh, two leaders. But I'll, uh, I'll do this particular phase and uh, we'll see how we go before uh, I uh, uh, concede to a French victory. Let's start with the three over here and uh, with the junior leader I'm going to add uh, two command points uh, in terms of uh, machine gewehr and uh, we'll fire the machine gun at the French behind that stone wall. So uh, it's going to be uh, ten dice uh, needing fives. Okay, ten dice needing fives, three hits in hardcover, and uh, we're going to say that the black dice is the machine gun team, and that's one kill. Now, let's see if we roll a one, if it's uh, one of the leaders. Yes, it is. Now, although I ha I've got three leaders uh, in that area, I've got uh, a senior leader and a junior leader knocked out, and a junior leader who's fine. So I'm going to say 1-2, it's the junior leader who's okay, 3-4, the junior leader who's knocked out, and 5-6 uh, is the senior. And it's going to be the junior leader who currently is knocked out. And what happens to him? Uh, he takes a light wound. And so uh, that's uh, a bad thing for the French. I think it's going to be a minus one for a junior leader wounded. Well, it is a minus one, and they are down to one. With the other three, we're going to fire with this unit. The machine gun team can't uh, see the French because of where the bridge is over there. However, uh, the six rifles can, so we're going to say six rifles firing and uh, needing fives. And nobody hits. Over to the French and down to two dice and uh, two fours. Okay, we've got two fours. Um, the, inferi oh, the inferior senior leader is back up after being patched up by the uh, uh, medic in the last phase. Uh, the medic's gonna, so I'm gonna use one of the fours actually as a medic, and the medic is going to work on the uh, junior leader who's uh, knocked out at the moment and also has a light wound if you remember so he'll still only have one command uh, when he wakes up um, but with the other four the senior leader is going to order the unit to move up to the stone fence and fire so we're going to fire at half effect for this phase let's see how far we can move a couple of inches okay it would be ten dice uh, but we're going to uh, we're firing at half effect so this time it's just going to be five we're firing at the germans in the open And that's four hits. Green is the machine gun team out in the open. And we've got two killed, one in each uh, team. Let's see if it's the leader. No, it's not. So now it's a new German phase. Three dice, uh, one, two, and a three. All right, with a one and a three, the uh, senior leader's gonna move so that he can get near enough to take off a point of shock off the one of the men and order them to fire. And with the two, this unit is going to move and fire at half effect, but get into a position where they're able to uh, fire with both the machine gun and the rifles. Move the senior leader, no problem. I'm gonna say that the machine gun and one rifleman can fire uh, out of that unit, again, at the French over here. Remembering they've only got one uh, at morale left. So if we can get a, a lucky hit, needing fives, and we've got three hits. I'm going to say two on the machine gun team, one on the rifles. It's the green dice that's the rifles. And no effect. Let's just see how far the other unit can move. Four inches. So they move right up to the bank. Uh, rather than 14 dice, which would be eight for the machine gun and uh, six for the rifles. 
Instead, we're just going to have seven because they've moved, so it's half effect. Uh, again, firing at the same target over here, needing fives. Seven needing fives. That's uh, some good shooting. So we've got four hits. Two on the rifles, two on the machine gun team. Green this time is the machine gun team. And we've got uh, one kill. Now, is it a leader? If we roll a one, this could be the game. Yes, it is. So, like before, one, two is the junior leader who's standing. Three, four, it's the one who's been injured. And five, six, it's the senior. It's the one who's already been wounded. So I think this could be curtains for him. And what happens to him? Three. Well, for that I think he's uh, knocked unconscious uh, again. I'm not quite sure how you could be knocked, uh, knocked out twice. But uh, either way, he's uh, taken a wound, so we need to roll for a bad thing. So what's the consequence of the bad thing? It's a four, which is certainly a minus one. And that's the game. And that's it. Uh, a valiant attempt from the French, but unfortunately they end defeated. And so that's the end of the game. The uh, French will uh, withdraw. I suspect that unit might uh, move into the building. And uh, the Germans, although they haven't uh, got through in terms of getting uh, a unit off the board, a team off the board, they have uh, drawn uh, the French down to zero in terms of their force morale. Now, I had actually been tempted to stop the game uh, once the uh, officers had been captured. And I am I think what I'm going to do is to play uh, another game. I'm going to change the table. I'm going to move it uh, further up in this direction. So maybe start the river from here and see if we can have a game where uh, the objective is to take this building and to capture the uh, officers who've been taken. So uh, I'm going to work out uh, what the forces might look like and uh, change that round. I think that's going to be a follow-up to this game, but uh, I, uh, I think it's been a good one and hope you've uh, enjoyed it. Just a uh, final thing to say is uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate uh, uh, watching and also the uh, help through the, uh, through the group in terms of what we were looking at beforehand uh, when the officers were captured and how we reflected that. If you uh, are interested in leaving some uh, comments, please do. Uh, with regards to the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, then uh, please uh, join. Well over a thousand uh, subscribers. And also you can join uh, any of the Facebook groups, either Cheney Command France 1940 or Wargaming World itself. So, thanks once again, and we'll see you soon.